My final guest tonight is one of the nation's favourite comedians. Josh Widdicombe is one of Britain's most popular comedians. After being nominated for Best Newcomer at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in 2011, he became a familiar face on TV screens, teaming up with Adam Hills and Alex Brooker in the wildly popular The Last Leg. I thought the appendix was, like, going to be a big thing, but... Yeah. I feel the same. You know when the Spice Girls toured without Victoria and you realised how little she actually did? <laughs> Since then, he's written and starred in his own sitcom, One Taskmaster, and this year he's released his Sunday Times best-selling book, Watching Neighbours Twice a Day. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the wonderful Josh Whittaker! <laughs> Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming on the show. We've tried to get you on loads for the show I'm, and it's finally happened. I'm delighted to be it's because here. because you're so busy, mate. I know. Books, tours, a new show. You're really making everyone else look bad. Can you just relax? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, I'm doing too much, but um, the other option is I've got two children at home, so I need an excuse to be out of the house. <laughs> right. So Do you ever sort of fabricate them? Do I ever fabricate them? Yeah. 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 I'm currently told my wife I'm going for seven shits a day. That would have been a very different book. <laughs> <laughs> the photos bit in the middle of the book <laughs> yeah, would be yeah. well worth reading, wouldn't it? <laughs> but there's so much to get chat. The first thing, you've got a new show out called One Night In. Yeah, it's me and Alex Brooker from The Last Lag. And they basically, at night when they're closed, Britain's biggest tourist attractions, we go in and we have the whole night and we can do whatever we want. So where have you been then? So we went to Alton Towers, yeah. uh, London Zoo, the Natural History Museum, and uh, we went to Legoland as well. What was your favourite place? Alton Towers. Wow, Alton Towers at night. No cues. <laughs> Cos I'd only been once before, and that was a disaster, cos the time before I went, I got stuck in the black hole. <laughs> you can make your own jokes yeah, up yeah. that. <laughs> But, so the black hole was... It's a... quite hard to get into, but once you... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, um, some people prefer it, I But what, what... I don't know... How so do the get... black hole was... I don't think it's there anymore. It's not there anymore. Yeah. It's uh, purely in the dark. So it was in the dark. Uh, you went to, to a car and you are basically... I'll show you. you. One of you would sit at the back like that and then you'd, like, spoon your mate. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this is really weird looking up at you like yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so it was me and two mates. Yeah. And um, we went in and we went on, it was going around, and then we just kind of lost momentum and we stopped. And we were just sat there in the dark. <laughs> and it's terrifying. Yeah. And we were there for about 40 minutes. And like the worst thing was, because there was three of us, my two mates were in their own car. And throughout that, I was spooning a 60 year old woman I didn't know. <laughs> So is it a bit like that scene from Ghost? Yeah. Where... <laughs> if that little old lady, if you're watching... Yeah. And, and you remember that happening, it was in. She, she might recognise my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who did they you... They weren't like that, I don't know... Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> who did you who did you take to Alton Towers? We this took time? Roisin Connerty to Alton oh, Towers. Oh wow! Well there you yeah. go. One of the dreams to take. Yeah, so she was a Is lot of fun. Is she into fun. roller coasters? She didn't. She wouldn't do Oblivion. Yeah, so it's just me and Alex. I think we've actually got a photo of you. Have you? <laughs> like you can see, we're holding hands, right? Yes. So we got to the top of Oblivion. We thought we'd be fine. Yeah. And then um, it kind of holds you over the hole, right? That you go vertically down into. We're so scared. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. 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 that we were holding hands, and without realising it, it was the first time we just told each other we loved each other. <laughs> so it was just like this mo. We didn't mean to. And I actually think it's a really good thing to do. I think they should do it with more, like, TV double acts. <laughs> As a real test. Yeah. Like, if you put Anne and Deck down there and see what they actually say to each other. <laughs> now, it's not just the, the, uh, the TV show. You've also got a book out called uh, Watching Neighbours Twice a Day. Yeah. Which really instantly, if you're, if you're you know, raised in that era, you know what you were driving at. And yeah. It's almost like it's your life through the TV you watched. Yeah, so it's like a book about growing up in the 90s and it's telling the story of my childhood and the decade through the different TV shows. So each chapter starts talking about a different TV show to kind of tell the story. Do you find that now, obviously, being in TV, have you met those people that you kind of adored when you were little? Yeah. And What's that like? That was... So thrilling. Yeah. Like, I still get kind of 
overawed by these people. Yeah, totally. I, when I met Steve Coogan, my, like, my voice went. Yeah. Like, I started kind of, hello, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> but um, I, for a period, was going to the same gym as Andy Peters. Yeah. And... Well, I, weirdly, I chat to Peters, so we clearly go to the same gym. <laughs> so, me and Peters are cool. We've got no problem. And I know it's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's ripped. Don't be afraid of Peters. Peters is lovely. Have you seen how muscly he is? Very muscly. He's in a vest in the gym, he yeah. knows what he's doing, he's yeah. getting in your head. <laughs> but he's like my gym buddy. But it's Andy P. Does he spot you? No, but we just go, hey, how's things? <laughs> <laughs> what I love as well, I read this really interesting thing about you, that you described yourself in another interview as a young Alan Sugar, which really fascinated me. What were we driving at? Did you uh, briefly run a uh, football club? What? <laughs> Uh, no, for a, um, so for one uh, year when I was ten, I ran a marble-themed after-school nightclub. <laughs> First rule of marble club. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to break it. Oh really? <laughs> no, because we grew up in Devon. There wasn't much to do, and then a place opened called the House of Marbles, which was Britain's number one marble emporium. Was it? Yep. <laughs> They could have said any shit, but go on. <laughs> so it was, yeah. So marbles took off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love There it. wasn't much to do yeah, yeah, on yeah. Dartmoor in 1992. So, but how did you turn this into, like, a business? So then, afterwards, me and my friend Thomas decided we were going to have an after-school club at Fridays at my house. And basically what that meant is the other kids from my school, about 15 kids, would come to the house. We charged them a quid to get in. <laughs> You're running a VIP club? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pa my parents have got to look after them. I'm charging them in. And then I'd sell them stuff from my bedroom. <laughs> wow. At a fee, right? And then we'd do a disco, which was... A, uh, basically, I'd got some disco lights, and my brother, who was older than me, had made me a tape of Rhythm is a Dancer by Snap. <laughs> and I was making ten quid a week, which, as a ten-year-old, is big bucks. That's chaos cash. You what? What were you doing with that fold? What was I doing with it? Yeah, yeah. Reinvesting it in marbles. <laughs> <laughs> Really big swirly one though, right? Yeah, yeah so I was, I was, that was my, the height of my business acumen as a child. <laughs> so we've got Christmas coming up, we should chat about that. Are you a fan? Yeah, yeah I am I, a fan, I, I, love, I love it. it. Yeah. Absolutely, I do. I, I, I'm very excited about it. I Anyth love Christmas. Is there anything that pisses you off? Yeah, everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> adults that still have advent calendars. Oh. I've always seen myself as a controversial comic. <laughs> yeah. I've got a friend, 31, and last year he was like, oh, yeah, I got a chocolate advent calendar. I got overexcited. I finished it by December the 4th. <laughs> You're 31, buy a Twix! Yeah. Like... <laughs> and there's gin... Have you seen the gin advent calendar? Gin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By yeah, December yeah. the 3rd, you've lost your job? Like... <laughs> Sex toys, have you seen that? I haven't seen... Oh, no, fuck, yeah. Because, which is what it's called, <laughs> I... <laughs> I got, I got given, I've just remembered this, years ago, I got gifted one from, from Durex. Yeah. With uh, all kinds of paraphernalia yeah. on it. But they obviously looked at me and went, he needs help. <laughs> like, <laughs> they had, like, one of them fucking, you know, them fists. Yeah. Well, I don't, but... Yeah, but what, yeah. what am I meant to do with that? No, it's mad. Like, an well, I know what I'm meant to do with it, but it's just like... An advent calendar. No. If you, yeah, that's if you're not, away for three days, you've got to do one of those catch-up mornings. So like, there's yeah. three of them you've got to get through. Yeah, but imagine that in the nativity. You've got gold, I've got Frank, and it's <laughs> Don't act like you haven't seen one of these, Mary. Um, <laughs> well, she's done, she's done good, Joey. Um, I, yeah, I agree with you on that, the advent calendar. Totally agree yeah. with you. Yeah. What's it like? Um, it must be... Because your, your kids are young, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, four and... One. Oh, so, presumably, the four-year-old, magical, right? Yeah, loves it. Can't yeah. wait. She's so and excited. You, and Santa still exists, right? Yeah, he does, yeah. Good. Yeah, cos I, like, I hate those kids... You know what I mean? Those parents are like, well, we need to tell you the truth. And we have to spoil everything. <laughs> <laughs> I say the Santa isn't real. It's yeah. like, why would you do that? Exactly. Let them have their dream. And he is real. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, by the way. Oh, what, have you got someone... Is your daughter here? Shit, I don't... <laughs> like, let's hope not. Jesus, all that shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, 
Santa is real. You're right. Yeah, Santa um, is real. So what's next? And you're as if. So we've got a TV show, we've got the book, and you're back on tour. Back on tour. Yeah. I, so it's a tour I started before lockdown. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of back on. We're still going. Who knew? I'd still be touring three years later. <laughs> but not due to public demand. <laughs> <laughs> due to pandemic stopping it for 18 months. And um, when does One Night In start? It starts December the 16th, uh, which is 9 p.m. on Channel 4. Excellent. And you've also got the Sky Show Dating No Filter. So I'm on that, which is which second series now, which is I get to hang out with Rosie Jones, who's one of my favourite people in the world. Basically, there's lots of comics, and we just get to watch people's dates and comment on them. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, it's really brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Were you clear that? I watched one on the black hole. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Such a treat, man. Thanks for coming oh, to the show. Thanks for having me. Please give it up for the fantastic Josh Whitaker. <laughs>